And I'm hoping I find you well on this, uh, is it Thursday? Jeez. <laughs> I keep losing track of time. No, it's Wednesday today. Wednesday it is. Right. Okay. My name is Prosper Taruinga and I'm the founder and CEO of Live Long Digital. And I'm also the creator and writer of the now world famous online prosperity blueprint. And um, yeah, my job is essentially simple. I help online pro um, <laughs> entrepreneurs like yourself to actually market, scale and grow a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And every single day, um, if we can make it or if, you, if I can make it at 2 p.m. AEST, we show up here and we do what is called a lunch and learn for 30 minutes where we help you actually brand, package and also, you know, explain your message so that you can have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Okay, so in today's show, it's going to be a very explosive one. So you want to make sure that you're sticking out all the way through to the end because... This is probably the most important step of your whole online enterprise. If you know how to convert prospects into paying customers, then everything else that you're working for will be a piece of cake. All right. We're talking about how you can actually convert your prospects into buyers and to people that exchange your information with their credit card numbers, expiry date, and what other thing is that number at the back, that three three number thing for the, for the card? All right. So like I said, my name is Prosper. I know yesterday I was going by the name Jaden K. Smith and everybody freaked out. I'm so sorry for having caused you a panic. It was just, you know, us trying to be funny on the internet. And if anyone sends all forwards that message, it's got a lot to say about yourself and not the person that wrote it, all right? So I took the liberty, first of all, before we jump into this call, of actually just looking at that message that was being sent around by a Jaden K. Smith, and I reverse engineered it just to see why it got so much attention and why it got so many people to actually follow through with the action. And I realized four simple things that were present in that message. First of all, it had a name. That name looked legitimate. You know why? Because it had an initial on there, K. Smith. If it was just Jaden Smith, it would have just been an ordinary name. But it was Jaden K. Smith, all right? So it, it, it's not just going to be one of those, you know, one-hit wonder names. It's something that people have actually thought through. That was the one thing. And the second thing that people should have noticed about that message is it had a clear call to action, all right? The call to action was forward this message and this is how you forward this message. You hold and press and when you hold and press, you then choose how many people you want to send. Now, that was really, really clever because a lot of people, we only end at telling people, share this message, like this content. We don't tell people the steps after what we want them to do in order for them to actually do the desired action we're asking off of them, all right? So it was a really good marketing um, message that may have negative connotations, but if you're as clever as I am and you reverse engineer everything and you see why it got the attention it got, this would be a very good show for you today. Now, Anne Severs says, hello, Prosper. How are you doing? Hope you're having a fantastic day right there, okay? So, first of all, it had a genuine name. It had a genuine fear. The fear of which people are always afraid to be hacked, right? It's a genuine concern that everybody has on Facebook. And it had a clear call to action and clear steps to follow after you have taken that action. All right. So essentially, this is how it was actually laid out. It was like, this is what I've got. This is what it will do for you. This is how it works. This is what I want you to do next. If you follow that sequence in your messaging, in your, um, you know, the way you communicate with your clients, you will close as many deals as possible. 
All right. And I looked at it and I was like, that was really, really, really a clever and well thought out call to action that was put in a few lines and everybody went mental about it. Okay, can you imagine how many people are talking about this Jaden K. Smith today and how, you know, either they're annoyed by it or they're mesmerized about how it all went viral. Okay, it's just a call to action, guys. He or she told people to share it, but the way they share it is you hold and press and, and it's easy instructions. People are now so desensitized that they don't even think for themselves. If you give them a reason to think, a reason to do something, and how to do it, they will do it for you. Now, if that's not a lesson in, in and itself itself, then I don't know what else you're going to be learning on marketing. All right. So back to today's topic. Obviously, um, you know, it, it, it's it's sort of in the lines of how to actually close deals with your clients and how to actually get them to convert, okay? So we are always told, all right, create an avatar for your, say, ideal client, and then you put them through a sales funnel, and then you want to provide them with the kind of information that they want. But I'm here to say, if you don't know the actual art and science of how you can convert them, you will never be very successful. OK, so, you know, it's, it's probably the most important step, like I said earlier on, of you, first of all, the online prosperity blueprint to actually see how you can convert every person that comes through your channels all right, into a customer. Or if they're not ready, then they can be an advocate for your work. Just like how everybody else was sharing and commenting about that uh, message for Jaden uh, Smith yesterday. OK, so. It then becomes easy work for you because you've created a buzz around what it is that you're doing. You've created a buzz about your work and half of the world or half of the Facebook population sort of ends up knowing about you. OK, so I've, I've mentioned in the past that when you're talking to people that actually know you, when you're talking to people that trust you, converting them becomes a whole lot easier. All right. What happened yesterday with that message? And Eric, thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you're having a fantastic day. What happened with that message yesterday is, first of all, it was sent through somebody who automatically knows you. So you're going to trust what they're saying. All right. And then after it, 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 them being, you know, it being a trustworthy message, it came in with a legitimate name and a legitimate cause for concern coupled with a call to action all right we should learn from that small just that small paragraph how you can actually turn around your business yesterday i was talking about branding all right and after talking about branding i talked about how you can actually then utilize that every single day so that people get to know like and trust you and now i'm saying that it's easy to convert people that already know you it's easy to convert people that have already heard about your stuff, etc., etc. Chris, how are you doing from Texas? Hope you're all doing well. Okay. Why, why, why is this so you, you may ask? Because at the end of the day, people do business with those that they know, like, and trust. All right. If you are out there and you're not putting yourself in your, in, you know, representing your name, representing your brand, representing what you do, you might be missing out on a lot of people that are yearning to know about you. OK, because your potential customers, they trust you and they're going to trust the information that you're going to provide them. All right. And they are now going to likely pay you or reciprocate that trust with their credit card. All right. I'm telling you, yesterday, a whole bunch of lazy people were made to work by, um, you know, sharing that message. All right. It's only because they felt that it was their only way of giving value out. It was their only way of paying those people that are giving them value, you know, by being in the know. So you want to make sure that your brand is the one that's giving people that emotion of, Oh, I got to do this. You know why? Because this person is always giving information. All right. And Eva Lee is from Bahamas. How's it going? I've always wanted to come to the Bahamas. Hope you're enjoying yourself there. Okay. So 
every person that is coming through in contact with you or getting to know, like, and trust you, you have to start treating them not as a hashtag. You have to start treating them as a potential person that will then convert into a customer or share your stuff and put you in front of an audience of people that would um, share your stuff or per people that will actually purchase. All right. So in order for any of those transactions to actually start happening, trust is an important component in the sales persuasion process. All right. You are never going to influence somebody who doesn't trust you. You are never going to influence somebody who doesn't have a big enough reason for them to want to do anything that you ask off of them. All right. So people just don't buy from anyone. That's, that's something that you have to realize. They're not just buying from anyone. They buy from those that they know, like, and trust. All right? So if you're learning anything from that message yesterday, that message was sent from somebody that you already know, and somehow maybe whatever relationship you have from that person, you already trust them. The only thing that you're going to do is also want to forward that trust and reciprocate that know-how that you've been given by that person sending you that message. And for the dumb ones that then send it off or that then forward it to other people, that message went viral. Okay? So at the end of the day, I mean, some of these things are always a learning curve, especially if you're really serious about your business and if especially if you really want to win in this game. All right. So the first thing that you really, really got to do um, and that you need to do is actually build trust with your prospects. No matter it's the first time they're meeting you, it's the second time, the third time or the fourth time, or they've transacted with you over and over and over again. You always got to be having elements that they can trust that you are there for them today, tomorrow, and you'll always be there. All right. And fortunately, guys, <laughs> or unfortunately for some, trust is something that takes time to build. And when you provide value to people and sometimes for free, without them even expecting anything in return, they will absolutely love you for that. All right. So you want to ask yourself in your business right now, what are you doing to instill trust? What are you doing so that people know you? How many people are you reaching out to every single day so that you at least uh, have a new audience to showcase your work to? Are you doing that through ads? Are you doing that through content? Are you doing that through networking? How are you getting around to people and how are you actually building that trust so that people would then do transactions with you. All right. So no matter what person you have met and no matter what stage there might be in what is called the buyer's journey, which I'm going to be explaining to you in, in a short while, the buyer's journey is essentially four or five stages, depending on how you want to treat your business. First of all, people get to know that your business exists, that's the awareness stage, all right? And then people start considering, now that they are aware of you, they start considering if you're the right kind of person to work with, all right? And then from the consideration stage, they go in and they make a decision whether you are actually the person to work with them or not, all right? And that could still be the same person going through all those stages or some may miss those stages, etc., etc. So your funnels, your sales messages, your interaction with people should actually decide where exactly that person is within the buyer's journey or the buyer's cycle. Not everyone is going to convert and convert on first interaction. I wish it was like that, you know, it's never going to be like that, all right? So people need to see your stuff six to eight times, four times, 16 times, depending on their skeptical brain or how open-minded they are, all right? So every single day that you're waking up, you got to be making sure that you are on a mission to impact at least one person so you're starting their buyer's journey. Every single day, I'm speaking to people that have been following me for 
eight months, six months, four months, two months, even a day. All right. They need to start because whatever message you have, ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to lie to you, Eric, uh, Eva Lee. Your message is going into a skeptical audience already. First of all, these people have been burnt. They've paid somebody to do exactly what you're going to tell them you're doing. All right. They're already suspicious. The fact that they've never heard about you. They don't know if you're going to be there for the long haul or you're just a one click wonder. You have to actually instill that trust, the confidence, etc., etc., for them to actually know that you're the person that will carry through your promise and your brand values that they can actually then say, hey, here's my credit card. I want to purchase something from you. All right. So every single day you're waking up, guys. Every single day you're waking up, you have to be making sure that these people are actually starting a relationship with you. And like I said, it takes six months. So right now you should be reaping, you know, the benefits of somebody you met in January. Yeah. Right now you should be reaping the benefits of somebody you met in February. So you have to continuously do that until the end of the year. By December, people that you've met today are ready to transact. That's just how it operates, guys. Nobody's just going to wake up from their house's door and be like, oh, I think I've got to go and speak to Eric today. Or, you know, this Jaden K. Smith person might be the best person to talk to. People take their time. And, you know, you might have heard me say in the past that people are ready to buy when they're ready to buy. Not when you decide to put out your ads and you decide to start selling to them. Everybody else is busy right now. You're probably watching me in a small corner or you, you, you've saved this video so that you can watch it later. You know why? Because it, you are not obliged to follow, listen, watch every single one of my videos because you've got stuff to do. All right. And I don't even mind, you know, uh, reaching out even if there's no one watching me live right now or even if there's six or seven or 10 or 15 or 20. I know some people are going to watch in post production. Some people are going to watch next year. Some people are going to watch five years from now. Some people are going to watch 50 years from now and it will still be relevant. All right. People will buy when they're ready to buy. Not when you're ready to sell. Now, Eric says, yep, you have to overcome other bad experiences from your industry and educate your clients on what makes you different and gain that trust. Of course, because there's a lot of copycats in the market right now, Eric. There's a lot of one click wonders. People want to go with people that are actually going to stay the long haul. People actually want to, to, to give their money or business to people that actually do have a business that are passionate about what they're doing. Not just hiding behind the logo and saying, oh, you know, just because I think y'all now know me or just because my book is on Amazon or oh, it is on Amazon, by the way. If you want a copy, just type in Blueprint and I'll give you a link to get it on Amazon. All right. OK, so like I'm saying, guys, you you maybe heard me talk about this for a while. You know, people are ready to buy when they're ready to buy, not when you're ready or when you've got fifty dollars to put out ads. So every single day, you definitely have to be going out there and meeting, creating and relating to your clients. Like I said, it takes time for somebody to actually get to know, like and trust you and then for them to start transacting with you. All right. I've had people that have been following me for months and then they just show up and say, hey, listen, I think this is now the time. And my question to them is, why me? Why now? All right. And then they start telling me all the things, the fun things they are already sold. What we're doing is just exchanging numbers, exchanging credit card details. I win. They win. All right. So like I keep saying this, people are ready to buy when they're ready to buy, not when you are ready to sell to them. So don't go on suking that people are not buying from you because you know what? They haven't seen anything. They haven't trusted you enough. They haven't seen your work enough. OK, so, you know, this is correct, but it doesn't really mean that you are at the mercy of your your prospects to actually make a sale. All right. So don't get disheartened that, oh, I'm never going to amount to anything, et cetera, et cetera. All right. You can also influence that buyer's journey or you can also fast track that, you know, that cycle. If it's six months, you can cut it short a little bit by providing content, by being consistent and actually showing that you give up. All right. 
So, you know, like I said, every buyer actually goes through a journey, all right, where they maybe get to hear you for the first time. So that's their awareness phase. And then they then decide if you're the right kind of person to help them solve their problem and then they convert. Some people might move a little bit too quickly throughout that journey and while others take their time, you know, but if you're giving them information, if you're consistent and you contact them and you're educating them and you're actually, you know, influencing them to make that decision and helping them move along with that journey, they will ultimately become your customers no matter what, okay? So, you know, like I was saying, all prospects usually go through phases. Figure out what aspect of your content is going at what stage of your bias journey. Maybe some people have only met you for the first time. Don't expect them to convert. If everyone converted at the first time, damn, I wouldn't even have a job. All right, so that's why I can come out here every single day because this is a, a, a bump and grind every single day. You gotta be consistent, putting out content and, 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 and making sure that you are relevant to the audience that you want to attract, all right? So when people are not aware of you first, right? In, in the, the awareness phase, buyers don't even know that you exist. All right, just because you've been working behind the scenes in your business for two years, three years, it doesn't mean everybody else knows you and they don't need to know you anyway. All right, these people right now that want to go to the Olympics, maybe next year or the year after, and they've been practicing six years behind the scenes. All right, and Eric says, what you mean we have to date first? <laughs> well, of course. Just because somebody swiped right, it doesn't mean they want to Netflix and chill with you, Eric. You know, yeah, unless you're a Trump and you just grab them by them. So, <laughs> so in the awareness stage, as I was saying, guys, they don't know what your product is. They've never heard about you. And this is where you find a lot of people. All right. They don't even know what you're selling. Okay, so, you know, it is your job to literally find these people and they are the people that are called prospects. All right, you find them, figure out exactly who they are and find out what they want and make sure that your product or service delivers that to them because they don't quite know you, you know. So at this stage of awareness, right, the game is simply just pretty much generating leads with a goal of getting some of them to actually then raise their hand and say, hey, Listen, I'd want to know more about your product or I'd want to know more about your services and related topics. You know what I mean? So when, you, when you're doing this, this is the stage where you put out lead magnets, all right? You put out content to actually attract all these prospects. And then all you're doing is focusing on helping them to actually solve their problems that they have. And I like to do it live like this to actually help somebody by actually helping them. All right. And once somebody has actually opted in and said, OK, I think you're the right person for me. Maybe they download, you know, whatever lead magnet you're putting out there. If you haven't got this, uh, type in Blueprint and I'll give you um, a, a link to that. All right. And then when they start sort of getting into your content, they then revert back to the trust we were talking about earlier. They get to know you now. They get to trust that you're relevant. Your content is genuine. They get maybe an instant result here and there. And they now are aware of who you are, your product, and what your services are. This then leads them to a stage which is now called consideration. They are now considering, are you the right person? You might know what you're doing, but are you the right person that they want to work with? All right? So this is the consideration stage now, all right? So everybody else is just rushing in, hey, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. But you're not following where your customers really are at the moment, what their pain is, and where, where they want to go with their business. They haven't even known who you are, and you're already expecting them to convert. It doesn't work like that. So they have to be aware of you first. And once they're aware, they have to start considering if you're the right fit for them. That also means you have to consider if you can work with those people. Gone are the days where the customer is always right. I fire clients every single day. If somebody is not fitting into my program, phew, go away. 
I don't need you. The, the, the only reason I'm sitting here is because, you know, I'm, I'm doing things that I love. So why would I have to be punished by working with people that are not ready to work with themselves? So if you are in the consideration stage of wanting to work with me, I don't want lazy people. Go away with your MLM crazy mechanics. We work. All right. We put in work around here. And I'm not, a I'm, not, I'm not ashamed or afraid to tell you off and tell you to go yourself if you're not putting in the work. So that's the consideration stage. Now, once you know what I'm capable of, we go in military style up until you get results. Because I'm not going to put my name on something that's not going to come out to anything. All right. So in this stage of consideration, you know, the prospect now has a bit of awareness of you, your company, your brand, or what it is that you're offering, etc., etc. You know, there's still a lot of people that won't buy in this stage because they still need that one last move, that one last push. And you know, this is where maybe retargeting works. This is may, where maybe, you know, really good call to actions, get on a call with me, or do you want more info type, you know, conversions this is where it now starts working all right you see back in the time prospects will go you know you know will get all the the, the the information from a salesperson or you know you, you would have to sell them into you know considering to buy from you but now people have google people have the internet all right buyers don't even need to talk to you to learn more make sure you're putting out stuff that is making people want to know a lot more about you Okay, get people to want to learn more every single day. You are top of mind of the people that can make a decision in order to make a purchase from your products. All right. But what I'm saying is it doesn't mean you shouldn't be trying to get your information into the hands of people every single day. That should be your main prerogative. That's why I gave you guys that list of 100 content ideas. And if you haven't gotten it, just type in content so that I can send you a PDF that has 100 ways of creating content so that people are familiar with your work and they would actually convert themselves before you even open your mouth. All right. So make sure, you know, when, when, you're, when you're trying to get this information out there, it's relevant to them and it's focused to actually answering the questions that they might have. Most of the questions that people have is, is this the perfect thing that I want for my business? What's in it for me? That's the answer that you should be always attempting to answer in the consideration stage. All right. And then also in this stage, you also have to be showing them, you know, that you can actually help them by actually helping them. All right. Show them the benefits of working with you and, you know, you enlighten them of what the product is going to be, how it actually works, etc., etc. Yeah. So this part is where it's relevant to actually start retargeting and, and putting out ads that have a pixel so that you can continuously remind these people because they're in consideration stage. They've already known about you. They already trust that you could be the person to work with. So now just urge them a little bit with, you know, calls to action, etc., etc., and things that will help them to actually then convert. Right? You are no longer just, you know, hunting for, for customers here. Yeah, you are actually, you farmed them. You know why? Because they are aware of who you are. It's just now easy for them to transact with you. Okay, so naturally this consideration phase is the one that's the longest. It may go from a day, two days, a week, months, or even years, you know. So like I said earlier on, people are ready to buy when they're ready to buy, all right. So in this consideration phase, you want to make sure that you are really, really vigilant, you're following up, you're being consistent, and during this phase is exactly when you want your prospects to start talking to you, either they, they come through to watch a webinar or either they come through and they actually sit down and have a proper conversation with you in the form of a, um, um, a consultation. All right. So you want to make sure that you are aware of what stage your clients actually are so that you're just moving them accor accordingly for them to make that last transaction so they can actually pay you some money. All right. 
So half of the half of the time, what you want to be doing in this stage is actually just really giving out great information and presentations. Go on lives like this, and so that your your prospects are actually positioning your product or your service as better than what they're getting elsewhere. All right. Because you're not the only person that is actually reaching out to these people. You are not the only person that's in these people's newsfeed. How's it going, Guile? Hope you're having a fantastic day there, uh, C. Gloria. Yeah? Okay, so you want to make sure you're you always, you know, top of mind. A lot of prospects, you know, they're overwhelmed with decision making. Help them make that decision. Yeah? Make sure that you're, you're telling them you're the person that can solve their problems. All right? You shouldn't just go out there and say, oh, yeah, just because I'm the best in the market, etc., etc." Actually help them by helping them. Now, the last and final stage is when the customer actually makes the decision. A lot of us, you know, jump to this part of the transaction. You know, once your company is on the short list or once somebody has actually is aware of you has considered you know taking you on as a as 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 as, as their you know service provider depending on whatever it is that you 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 you're, you're selling the only thing that now happens is them actually converting themselves or just jumping on to make that buying decision all right so the 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 the, the, pro the prospects just needs to know you know the terms and conditions now the prospect just needs to know how long the contract would last what next steps they need to take and etc cetera, etc cetera. okay so you know this is just the last minute beats everybody likes to come to this end part but we are all forgetting the consideration stages all right so you know when when you now come to closing the sale and starting a new relationship with the client that's when the whole nice part of being in business actually you know starts maturing so you want to focus on campaigns that will actually help you walk every customer you know through to the decision making process nobody's going to buy from the first initial step that they have met you all right they have to consider, they have to see you at work at, at, at many times. They have to compare the prices, etc., etc. All right? And also one other thing, guys. Getting a new customer is just half of the battle. All right? <laughs> Once you've acquired that new customer, your job now means you have to make sure that they become loyal. They pay you the next month, etc., etc. Unless your business is just a one transaction, one-off type thing. But a lot of businesses lose a lot of money trying to get customers and they miss out on maintaining those customers again. All right. So you want to make sure that once you've completed all those stages, your clients, you know, the onboarding process makes sure makes them welcome. And it's an experience so that you can retain them and they continuously buy from you, etc., etc. OK, this is the only way you can actually start converting people into customers. At the end of the day, guys, the, there's no point in you acquiring new customers if you can't actually keep them and if you can't actually, um, you know, turn them into a profit. All right. My name is Prosper Taruvinga, and I'm the author and um, founder of Live Long Digital. And we've just put out this book, The Online Prosperity Blueprint. It's now available on Amazon. It details everything that I was talking about here on this live today. If you want to get um, a copy of this Type in the comments right now, Blueprint, and I'll send you a link for you to grab a copy on Amazon or to just grab a copy of the Blueprint so that you too can have a business that is actually turning a profit and you can actually be, um, you know, enjoy working in it. All right. If you don't want the Blueprint, just share this video. Okay. Click the share button. And um, when the video is finished, make sure that you, 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 you subscribe and let us know how we can actually help you, um, you know, go from where you are right now to stop playing with yourself and actually get leads and actually get a profit and a business that's worth talking about. All right. Like I say, guys, my name is Prosper Tarwing. I really, really hope you're going to have, um, you know, a fantastic week ahead. Type in Blueprint so that you can get a copy of this and you can get a rundown of what it is that we've been talking about. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day, guys, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.